Goshen, a professional astrologer, and in this video I want to talk about Libra and Libra rising for 2024. Welcome Libra, welcome back, it's so good to see you. And the year has a lot of interesting developments for you Libra, some of which you've been feeling since 2023. Before we dive into an overview and then a month by month detailed forecast, if you're new here, take a day on either side of the dates I give because it depends on your time zone. For example, a new moon might be on the day that I say, which is New York time or a little bit ahead or a day before. Please adjust and let's dive straight in. So Libra 2023 in July, the nodes of the moon, which are invisible points in the sky, moved into your sign and your sister sign Aries, activating your karma and opening doors for things to be cleared, to be seen, to be brought to the fore, almost like a wake up call for many of you. And as 2024 progresses, the nodes continue to be in the Aries Libra polarity. So three out of the four eclipses this year are going to be in the Aries Libra axis. And you will be experiencing those eclipses as strong opportunities to awaken, to get out there, to see who you are and to work towards authenticity, which is how the eclipse energy works. There will be one eclipse in Pisces and the way the nodes work, not to be too detailed, but to think back to 2014, 2015, that's when they were last traveling through that part of your chart and they would have awakened a lot of energies for you. So reflect back on that time. How were those years and what was being shaken up? The other positive energy for 2024 is around May 26. We're going to have Jupiter move into Gemini. That is an air sign and you Libra are an air sign. So we will have a beautiful trine or a flowing energy between Jupiter, this planet of expansion and beneficence and between your sun, if you are a Libra sun or your ascendant, if you are a Libra rising. And the best way to make use of this trine from Jupiter is to activate and say yes to opportunities. Jupiter presents us always with more, more opportunities. And when there is a trine or triangle aspect involved, the flow is easy. So we need to be our own driving force to make those opportunities come to fruition. Don't rest on your laurels this year, Libra, with those eclipses in your sign and in Aries and with Jupiter in Gemini, you want to be moving forward. If you have an opportunity to travel, say yes, because this could be part of a karmic situation in your chart where you are going to connect with people and work things out. If you have the opportunity to study, say yes, because the Jupiterian energy for 2024 from May until all the way through half of 2025 is going to be in that area of your chart that wants you to grow. Grow your mind. It's in the area that rules philosophy, your deep dreams, your quest for a more spiritual life, traveling abroad or connecting with people who live in foreign places. One of the ways we do that today is through YouTube. So maybe you are going to expand your empire. Whatever the case, 
don't give up if you come into any obstacles or brick walls because the third important energy for 2024 Libra is that Saturn is slowly moving through that part of your chart where you are coming to the end of a seven year cycle and that's going to take place at the end of 2025. So you are now in the last couple of years of pushing through a seven year cycle, perhaps one of the most challenging cycles because you've needed to motivate yourself and keep going. It, the way hasn't been clear and yet in spite of that, you've managed to keep going, you've managed to push through in spite of challenges, in spite of difficulties. If you have a Libra rising, you have 2024 and 2025 to continue to push up that hill and then you are going to emerge into the light and begin to reap the rewards of what you've been putting in for the last seven years. So it's very important to stay strong and to stay self-motivated. If you're a Libra Sun, you're also pushing through the last two years of a period which would have begun about five years ago. And there've been challenges, there've been some setbacks, and now you need to work hard because in 2026, you start a new cycle and you want to start it with the slate clear and ready to take on what is in front of you. So let's go month by month Libra. The first few days of January look pretty relaxed. I see you visiting neighbors or driving around your local community. Maybe you are having a party, maybe you're attending a party, but most of all, I want to invite you not to overschedule, not to get too stressed. On the first day of January, we have the planet that rules our communication and mindset moving direction. So throughout the world, we want to not get into a situation where we promised people we'd be meeting them at 10 a.m. And there we are wishing we could stay in bed until 11. Relax. Enjoy the first day of the year, allow an adjustment to take place. You do not have to be in top form on that day. By January 4th, things are starting to gel for you. And remember Libra, you are a cardinal sign. You like to initiate action. And you're, even though you are ruled by Venus and there is this strong sense of diplomacy in you, where you are able to always see the other side. You also like to sometimes walk your talk and take the lead. And what you're working on in 2024 and possibly what you've been working on your whole life is how do you remain in harmony in any situation without compromising your own initiative and your own integrity? So with the nodes in your sign, that's going to come up very strongly because Aries is about me and Libra is about you, self and other. And where do we find that balance between how we look after ourselves with our own needs and our own integrity and how we facilitate communication, listening, respect, harmony, all those things that Libra prizes. So 4th of January off to a great start. That's when the year officially begins. And for you, there's a lot of action in the home. We've got Mars, the action planet moving into that area of your chart. So pay attention, especially on the 4th, because it's a day where what you say has great impact. It can travel far. So be mindful that what you're putting out into your family, into the home, and possibly also on social media has integrity. It has value because people are going to sit up and notice on that day. It would be a wonderful day 
to do something meaningful with someone you love. And the other thing that could be activated for most of January for you could be one of your parents. Could be the father, it could be your spouse's mother, whatever the case, either parent may come to the fore. You might be visiting a parent and that's great. Enjoy it. It's favored at that time. The rest of January sees this activity in the home continuing. And if there's not a lot going on for you at home, we could also be seeing a lot of energy in work, the area of your chart that rules work. Now, I do want to say many of you are retired and you've asked me, how do I listen to your forecast if I'm not working all the time? When I mention the home of work, picture what you do out in the world, because every retired person I know is busy every day. They're either studying something, they're going about doing something, they're helping their children, they've got a hobby that they're serious about, on and on, they're volunteering somewhere. So take that, this area of work in your chart is how you are seen in the world. What is your role in the public eye? And that's how you interpret it. So yes, a busy January in all regards. As February comes in, this continues more of the same until around the 13th or so of February. There's a shift into that area of your life which has to do with children, romance, pleasure, relaxation. It's also the area of our chart where we are able to receive love and healing can take place on this level because it is a a rich area of gifts, things that we have earned in previous lifetimes. And allow that energy to blossom in February. Maybe you're going to find a new romantic partner and explore with them during this time. Maybe you're going to spend extra special time with your children and help them with creative pursuits or maybe you yourself are undertaking a creative pursuit because this is also the area that rules any projects that we give birth to. Are you writing a book? Are you painting something absolutely from the heart? February, March is a rich time to do that. So I invite you to plan your calendar and to utilize that energy while you have it available. Beautiful Venus will also enter that area of your chart around the 16th of February. And then at the end of the month, around February 23rd, there's going to be a full moon in a quieter place of your chart. So prepare for that. That could be a great time just to spend a couple of days on your own, reassessing your situation. If you're in a relationship that is not working for you, this will be an excellent time to reflect on whether you want to put energy into making that relationship better, improving it, or whether it might be time to move on. March continues with this creative energy activated in you and around the 22nd of March there's a switch. This is now our time to organize our daily routine, to make those dental checkups that we've been avoiding for a while, to do whatever we need to do to take care of our health. And I know many of you, Libra, have been putting energy into getting fitter, working harder. So from March 22nd through to the end of April, there's going to be a boost in that area. You want to put it to good use. Hit the gym and really recommit to an exercise program. You also have the planet Saturn traveling through that area of your chart, inviting you to take care of your health and to look long term. Are there small changes you can make in your diet, possibly giving up sugar that are going to have really beneficial effects for the long run? As a Venus ruled person, you may be partial to sugar 
and at the same time this is not something that is good for you as you move forward so lots of energy for self-discipline self-control and for getting yourself into shape for the way you want to be April, May and June of 2024 are very much focused on relationships. If you're not in a relationship, you may enter into one at this time. So I invite you to be open and to be available. If you are in a relationship, there are going to be opportunities to work on that. Things are going to come to the surface. The first lunar eclipse of the year is going to take place at the end of March, March 25th. And that's going to activate things about you and what you're going through because it's in your sign. So be mindful, no major decisions before the eclipse. And the week after the eclipse, things can come to light and more is revealed. You can make important decisions in a better frame. April then begins with a slowdown in the area to do with relationships. So I'm picturing you Libra possibly connecting with an ex-partner, ex-husband or wife or an old girlfriend or boyfriend. Maybe you are going to be healing something or sorting out financial issues that were kind of left untended. Whatever the case, it's a good time to tie up these loose ends and to reconnect. There's something that needs to be healed or needs to simply be put to rest there. So April 1st to April 25th, we've got that slowdown period where connection is favored with people that we have past karma with. And then at the end of April, there's also going to be activity as fresh energy comes into that house of relationships. And in between that, around April 8th, there's going to be a solar eclipse also in the house of relationships. If you're not in a relationship, adjust this forecast accordingly. We could be talking about a business partnership. We could be talking about issues that come up surrounding previous relationships and healing from those. And what is important at this time, April moving on into May, Libra, is that you remain very mindful and focused on how you do want your relationship to be, whether it's present tense or you're hoping for one in the future. Keep planting those positive seeds. If there's a big stress in a current relationship, don't make any rapid decisions just before that April 8th eclipse. Let things settle. We've had a March 25th eclipse and we've had an April 8th eclipse. So that's a energetic time and we want to let things settle and then we can calmly rationalize what we need to do next. All in all, it could be a very exciting time if you are making a presentation somewhere, having an exhibition, you are very much in the public eye. So enjoy that. If you're working in a business where you get the opportunity to put yourself out there, do so at this time and channel the energies wisely. As May continues with this theme of relationships unfolding, being explored further, there's another theme running parallel, which is that something might be coming to an end, a partnership of a financial nature. You may be, for example, if you have bought something with somebody as an investment. This investment might finally be unwinding and you might be going your separate ways, both happy, both having taking your money out of the situation. You want to try to tie up any loose ends by the third week in May. Other ways this could manifest are you are in a business with someone and 
it's always been a little unspoken how money is shared. Now is your time to clarify this. How is the money distributed? Get it written down and bring that to fruition. Because on May 26, Jupiter is going to shift into that new sign Gemini and you want all loose ends tied up that have to do with your financial dealings with other people. Could be your ex-partner and you need to get that divorce processed, finish up. It could be with an estate that needs wrapping up and finalizing. So then this positive energy can come in on May 26. And we mentioned that in the introduction, get ready for a year of opportunities from the beneficent planet Jupiter, saying yes to travel, saying yes to new areas of interest, expanding your mind and possibly reading more books that are spiritually orientated or meeting people who can put you on a path that is going to introduce you to a new way of living, a new way of being. Throughout June, it's more of the same as you adjust to this new energy. You've also still energizing the financial side. Maybe your partner is earning more money and this is a blessing to you. Whatever the case around June 17, there's an emphasis on how you communicate at work and going to invite you to be mindful of this during the second part of June and the first part of July. There are a lot of opportunities to energize the work environment at this time, whether you work for yourself or you're working for a company or whether you're retired and you simply have a hobby or helping somebody in whatever way you work, communication becomes key in July. And what you will find around July 5th at the new moon is you might be feeling a little bit of low energy on that day, the day before, the day after. Those are days to take care of yourself. Don't overload your calendar and allow yourself some time to just kick back and relax. Also, don't take things too seriously at this time. If there are issues at work, no one is trying to slight you. You simply have a little bit of low energy. And as cancer season progresses, this is such a great time for you to really lower your energy expenditure and take some time to care for yourself, Libra. And you know that you are a romantic at heart and you are an idealist. And many people in the world don't see the world in the same way that you do. So you need to take some time to pamper yourself and make your own world beautiful. Your environment, buy those flowers, pick those flowers, put them in the house. You need some beauty and it doesn't need to cost a lot. But having a beautiful home is very, very important for you. There'll also be a full moon around 21st in the area of your home. So you want to make sure that something comes to fruition at this time. Maybe you're moving into a new space that you've worked very, very hard to do. Maybe you are graduating and you've been working hard all year and there's a reward coming in at this full moon. Something is, there's a fruition. This could be the fruition of those hopes and dreams that you set on your birthday in 2023. We could also be seeing a positive energy to do with one of your parents, something ending, something beginning, some fresh energy. So honor that and prepare the home in advance of that full moon. Late July and early August, your ruling planet Libra, which is Venus, is also traveling through a sign and area of your chart where she was in July and August of 2023. However, at that time she was retrograde and many things came up for you which needed processing. 
Now in 2024, she's in that same area of the zodiac, but she's in direct motion. So this is your opportunity to feel good, to reflect on what happened last year, and to really realize that you've put that behind you and you've processed it. I invite you to take some kind of a short vacation at this time if you can, even if it's a day or two somewhere. Make that effort. You are going to have a wonderful time. Venus is smiling on you and there's a beautiful energy in the part of your chart that receives love and that wants to feel loved by the world. August is another great time to reconnect with old friends and people who you haven't seen for a while. Also to finish off those creative projects, paintings, plays, poems that you've set aside and are on the back burner. Re-engage with them. That full moon, which is on the 19th, is also connected to a planetary combination in the zodiac, which will allow you to reaffirm, to reconnect with your purpose. Why are you here? What are you doing with your life? And what do you feel that you need to do before your life is over? Our lives are very brief and we have all come here to do something. So I invite you to do that at this time. At the very end of August, Venus is also going to enter into your sign where she is right at home and she's able to bring about harmony, bring about beauty. So whatever your gender, go for a facial or go for a massage, treat yourself to some beautiful clothes, some handsome clothes, throw out those old socks that have been in your wardrobe for too long and really use the energy of Venus to declutter and to bring more harmony into your life. September looks like a hard work time for you. I'm seeing a lot of energy at work, some kind of friction that has to be overcome. And it's all for the good because it's pushing projects forward, pushing things forward that need to get done. Don't allow yourself to be put off by any setbacks that are happening at this time. September really needs a kind of a dogged step-by-step -step focus and allowing some of the tension that comes up between home and work or between what you'd rather be doing and what you need to be doing, let it come. You need to experience this and a lot can be accomplished if you just keep your focus during this month. Around the 18th, there will be another eclipse and this will be in a different area of your chart. Pisces is where the eclipse will fall and for you this is to do with daily routine and also with staying healthy. So pay attention to those two things at this time and use the day or two before the eclipse for a reboot, you know, lying low, not rushing about, always a good thing during an eclipse season. Because you're preparing for that second and final eclipse of the year on October 2nd, which will take place in your sign again. And that is mirroring the eclipse of March 25th. So reflect back on that and harness your own energies. Eclipses can bring very positive things if we are working in alignment with our purpose and we clear and we're living a life of integrity. They can really spotlight and push us forward into achieving things and into revealing where our next path is going to take us. So make a note of that eclipse and act accordingly. The rest of October sees you continuing with projects at work the tension is lessening a little bit and you're preparing for a shift of energies which is going to take place in November. Around November 4th, projects which you've been pushing through in September and October at work, they finally get the green light, things start to move ahead for you. That early part of November is very, very rich. 
Money could come in from work. If you're not working but you're a volunteer, perhaps you're going to receive some kind of reward for that. There's a lot of positive love and respect that you can receive at this time. Also a great time to hook up with friends and to reconnect with the community that you feel close to. Maybe you've been neglecting for part of the year an organization. Connect. Now is the time. Make those meetings, make those commitments, gather together for dinner and feel the support of people who love you and who care for you and who want the best for you. The middle of November has quite an intensive energy so I invite you to relax at this time. Don't overstress. We've got a full moon that is highly charged with energy and the two areas of your chart that are being activated mid-month can also bring up healing that you are doing on yourself. So be mindful of that. If you are going to go for therapy, that's a great time. Perhaps it's a single session. You're going to see an astrologer. You're going to see a psychologist. Maybe you're going to go for some art therapy. Who knows? But taking care of yourself mid-month is important. And going on a retreat would be really well favored. November 21st is also an important week because Libra Pluto is finally moving into Aquarius. And you may have heard about this move of Pluto into Aquarius on and off, on and off for the last two years. Now that week in November is the final movement where Pluto is entering an area of your chart that has to do with this creative expression and with children and with any kind of projects that are fertile and coming from you. Also speculation is ruled by this area of your chart. So if you are an artist, this is going to herald many, many years of deep and profound work. And I wish you all the very best with that. December is already upon us and it's the holiday season. So I wish you a wonderful end to the year. Bear in mind that because of the retrograde motion of Mars that is taking place from December 6 onwards, you're going to have a long visit of active energy in the area of your chart that has to do with friendships, money coming in from work and work itself. So challenges and important projects that were going on in September may come back for you again around January 25, February 25, and they're going to move and pass on by March. So don't stress. It's an opportunity to rework things and to assess what you want to take with you from the spring of 2025 onwards. And the year ends for you, Libra, with a new moon on December 30th in the area of your chart that has to do with the home. So it's as if we end the year where we began energizing the home, hopefully being with family or being in a beautiful space because many of you do enjoy your own company. Whatever the case, I want to see you grounded. I want to see you setting those intentions at the new moon that will take you forward into the new year with beauty, with grace and with harmony. Please post your comments. I love them. Let me know how it's going. Like and subscribe if you found something helpful in this video. And I will see you next time, Libra. Happy 2024.